Good morning, this is Judy Burrell and the Community Roundtable and I'm sitting in the office of the Healthy Living Park and I'm talking with the director Julie Mordecai. So tell me, Julie, what is this Healthy Living Park? What's it all about? And what do you do? Well, the Healthy Living Park is a um, piece of acreage, 38 acres in Alamosa in the San Luis Valley. Um, it was a public school, Polston Elementary. Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago the school left and we've had the opportunity to um, purchase this property uh, to utilize for community use and we're really excited about it. Um, it'll be both an agricultural enrichment place where people can learn about agriculture. Um, it'll have great opportunities for learning about um, environmental stewardship and it'll have recreational values for walking on our trails which run through it and it is going to be a place that is a, provides a sense of place for the community of Alamosa and people who come to visit uh -huh. so that's what it is and um, why am I the director, you asked? Mm -hmm. um, I am the director because um, I've been involved with this process of um, purchasing the property for about two years. I worked as, as a uh, volunteer director for, to raise the funds for this for about four months. And then I worked as an interim director. And then um, we decided it was time to do an, a national search or a statewide search. I applied for the position and, um, and, I re and I got it. And I was really excited because I wanted to be that person, but I wanted us to get the best person mm -hmm. that would, work, that would be, um, help make this thing come into reality. Um, and I'm passionate about it. Uh, because it's one of the most beautiful places in in this little town. Let's talk about that. It's right on the Rio Grande River, right? It's right on the Rio Grande River. It's it has tons of uh, river frontage. It has beautiful views when you're on the trails. It has some values for environmental ed when you're in the trees. It has 16 acres of arable land. Mm -hmm. And it and the and the soil is some of the richest in the San Luis Valley because it was before the dikes it had been an alluvi it had experienced a lot of alluvial um, it has alluvial soil because the river would go over the banks mm -hmm. um, add a lot of enrichment to the soil flooding you know every year and then now it doesn't anymore but you know hundreds of years of flooding thousands of years of flooding you, when you touch the soil it is incredible mm -hmm. yeah now you're going through a process of involving the community and also the trust for public land let's talk about that well our partner the trust for public land um, is helping us to acquire this property currently they are the they are the holders in the local foods coalition which is where we're located the Rio Grande healthy living park um, is a leaseholder and as soon as we have it paid off, which should happen by spring of 2016, it, we'll have it paid off before then, we'll have the money before then, but we need to do a lot of legal pieces around conservation easements and trail easements. But as soon as we have it paid off, then it'll belong to the Local Foods Coalition. Mm -hmm. And the Rio Grande Healthy Living Park is part of the Local Foods Coalition. We're a program. And then on top of that, the Trust for Public Land is doing a process for us that is incredible. We um, started with, you know, looking at our original plan that had been done through a community process as well, and uh, talking about what we liked and just didn't like, and what we wanted, what and what people wanted and to see on the property. Um, mm -hmm. And it changed a lot from what we were looking at two or three years ago. And um, uh, we're seeing a lot more value around agriculture and farming. We're seeing a lot of value around walking trails and we're seeing a lot of value uh, in terms of data around using the space uh, for the community as much as possible in terms of events or um, education and things like that. Now this process takes a long 
long time. It's, right? take, it's going to take a year and a half, and I really believe in a pro- this kind of process. Uh-huh. Um, this kind of process, and we did go talk to people who weren't as excited about the park initially uh, to see what their ideas were and what their concerns were as well to put into this data. We also um, just have believed strongly that it, you know, you have to ask a lot of questions. You, not everyone's going to agree on everything. You put everything together, you synthesize it, and out comes some of the most important parts of this park, according to the people who participate in helping us to well, design it. And ladies and it. gentlemen, I attended one of these meetings the other night, and there was a gentleman there who was passionate about canoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, so let's say canoes comes out really high in terms mm-hmm. of the, the uh, you, you know, utilizing the waterway, which is the Rio Grande River. We have a lot of frontage on the Rio Grande River. And let's say that comes out really high. Well, we still can't promise we're going to have canoes there because we have to check to see if it's legal. Mm-hmm. We have to check to see if the waterways are available. Uh, we know that there's some dams up and down the Rio Grande. And so maybe we can have a put in and just go for a short period of of um, length of time, I mean length of the river, but all these things that come up we have to then put through sort of two different think, um, seeds, if you, mm-hmm. seeds. One would be, does it fit into the core values of the Local Foods Coalition? And number two, I mean we have these wonderful value statements that we've written and it has to fit. And then the second piece is it has to make sense economically and, and then maybe a third, it, it has to be legal. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that's a very good thing. <laughs> we want to point out right now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a nonprofit organization. Yes. But it has to be economically sound. It has to contribute to economic development. Yes. Okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But now, in the structure of this, don't you have a committee that you talk to? What do they do? So we have committees and then action groups. Ah, okay. So we have... And it's... a hard-working group of people um, and we need more so if anyone's interested in helping us we need help in both the action groups and the committee around this project but um, the committee um, is comprised of stakeholders in the community uh, and several of the Guatemalan community members who farm there right now are involved in the committee um, we have a, a farmer we we have a beekeeper we have a um, we just have a variety of people that care about what happens with this property, um, and then um, moms, you know, mm-hmm. uh, people with skill sets to help organize this. Um, we have a ex executive director of a nonprofit that has a huge amount of skill sets to help us develop our structure as an organization. Mm-hmm. Um, without. Um, this person, Alice Price, I do not know if we would be able to move as fast as we have. Mm. It's been an incredible journey with this group of people. I've been a consultant in the nonprofit sector uh, for three years and have run nonprofits for 15 or something or a lot of years. And I've not worked with such a vibrant, hardworking group of people. It's pretty amazing. And I, I hate to say that because I have friends that are board members out there that I worked with when I worked in other nonprofits. But this group, you know, they may not all have a lot of financial wherewithal, but they are deeply, deeply invested. Excellent. Now, tell me, here we are in this valley. Why do we need something like that? I mean, we, we have farmers around here. What's going on? Well, we have, a, you know, a huge poverty rate. Um, 30% of our kids are, you know, going, are on, I think higher, are on free and reduced lunches. Our families here, um, even though we're in a farming community, mostly buy their groceries at the grocery store. Um, and we don't have access, a lot of families, to healthy food. Mm-hmm. Um, most of our food that we grow in the San Luis Valley is shipped out of the valley. And then most of the food that we eat here is shipped in. I've heard people call this a food desert. Yeah, in many ways, we're a food desert even though we're rural, which is very interesting. I mean, we aren't completely a food desert because we have a Safeway and a city market, and mm-hmm. a food desert usually is means that there's no, and we have a food co-op, mm-hmm. means that there's not um, any food available, that your only food available to you is at like the 7-Eleven or something. And But we do have these things, except that access to organic whole foods is not always 
attainable. Mm -hmm. And so by working with our partners like the food co-op and the farmer's market and then teaching people, giving people the opportunity to use this agricultural, agricultural, agricultural land, which is, um, will give many opportunities to people to not only farm there, but maybe learn to do some things in their backyards and we can maybe change the culture about food being grown here and Mm. eaten here. Mm -hmm. Well, now, as you're planning this and you're going through this process, you're thinking about elements of economic development that you can build into the project. Can you talk about that? Yes. So we're associated with um, a food hub and we're, that is in Mosca, um, and that's part of the Local Foods Coalition, one of the other projects. Um, and that food hub will can be utilized by our farmers to um, repurpose the food that they are um, making. So, like, let's say if they that they're growing. So, let's say if they're growing purple potatoes, maybe there's a purple potato chip opportunity. If they are growing chilies, maybe there's a way to make a red chili sauce. All those things can happen at our food hub and commercial kitchen there right away, because that is opening up very soon. Mm-hmm. And where is that located? It's in Mosca, at the old school in Mosca, mm-hmm. and where Ernie knew and Paul. Um, are processing their potatoes Mm -hmm. and we have a part of that warehouse which was the old school Mm -hmm. and I think we need to stop a minute and say where are you located where are we we're in Alamosa Mm -hmm. and um, this park is on the Rio Grande Healthy Living Park is in Alamosa Mm -hmm. which is is you know sort of the largest town in the San Luis Valley Mm -hmm. we have a university here um, we have a hospital here, so those have been our primary economic drivers and agriculture for okay. this area. And your office? Our is? office is not down, is down the street from Milagro's Coffee House on the corner of State and Main. We're at 412 State Street, um, and this is where we do our grant writing and things like that to make sure that this thing comes to fluition. Do you have a telephone number where people could call you? Is yes, that 719-580-0379. Okay, and ladies and gentlemen, we're going we're gonna to repeat that at the end of the show. So get your paper and pencil out so you can write it down. Okay, well now talk to us about, you're thinking about programs that people would be interested in. You, you talk, told me about a process that you would go through about what do we want to learn from this process. So I'd love to talk to you about that, Judy, but can, can I talk to you about all their economic development pieces hey, first? Hey, yes. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I also, I don't just see the food as an economic development piece for us. I see that, um, you know, the opportunity to farm out there is going to be good for a lot of people. They may determine that this is what they want to do and be farmers in our community, which would be very nice. I think that the space will have some very strong tur- tourism um opportunities and um yeah and um those tourism opportunities will be you know coming to see demonstrations of the farm and demonstrations of cooking and demonstrations of what's important in terms of the ecosystem and i think people will be stopping and seeing us that way and staying in alamosa Um, and then additionally um just the idea that some of these people that will be on our farm will become entrepreneurs and contribute to our community. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, so I guess that's sort of a program as well, leading to your question about programming. And um, so we, we have lots of, the process around programming has been this so far. We've brought together uh, small groups of people and those people just kind of gave us some ideas, but we will have committees or action groups around these Group um, ideas. So programming at some point will have an action group. But this last week, when Trust for Public Land was here to do some of our um, process planning, um, they we sat down with um, people who were chefs, a chef or a cook, and we sat with a person, a person who does environmental ed, and we and we talked about what kind of programs could be on the property. We did the same thing with interpretation. We looked at our assets of the property, this beautiful 38 acres, and said, what are some of the things we could talk to people about versus signage, but not just signage. Because let's say if we build a building and if it's done 
in a way that uses passive solar and solar, mm-hmm. or if we have children's activities that interpret life for them, those kinds of things will also be considered interpretive. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times when people think about interpretive, they think signs, but we're thinking everything there mm-hmm. will be something that has to do with interpretation. You told me something about benches. What's that all about? So when we were initially fundraising for this, we had um, a many donors that gave over $10,000 each. Now you have to understand that that's a huge amount of money in a place like the San Luis Valley. And each of those were promised a bench. And so um, my, you know, the thought process is art has come up as a value for mm-hmm. this, that we'd have different artists um, work on these benches, different sculptors, and, um, and hopefully that that will become something people want to come to see. Not just sit on the benches, because the benches will have an artistic, aesthetic quality as well. Mm-hmm. Abs- well, that's wonderful. Now, you were talking about interpretation, and what are all the things that you could, you're could you thinking about when you're developing this project? Well, you know, how. what are the best ways to look at the, you know, the soil? Mm-hmm. Could be one. Mm-hmm. You know, what is, un- what is under our feet? Um, soil is probably one of the most important pieces of this property is this this incredible soil right Mm -hmm. um what we could be looking at what what are the ways best practices for organic agriculture Mm -hmm. um we could be like i said interpreting the whole idea around solar energy and other alternative energies to power this whole project um we could be looking at um I'm trying to remember all the things that people came up with. Oh, like one was, this was a great one. Like if we, you know, looking at our own culture Uh and there's a huge um, amount of people that do uh, work around um, herbal medicine. They're called curanderas and having a curandera garden. And then that could be an interpretive site. So interpretation could be both the, the signage Mm -hmm. and the site itself and what you see when you're there and it doesn't always have to have a sign that goes with it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're really missing something. Julie talks a lot with her hands (laughs) and it's great. It's delightful. Absolutely. So you, you, you will be able to incorporate some elements of our local culture in this. Oh, that's very imperative. We're, we're, one of our partners is Sangre de Cristo Heritage Area. Uh huh. And we'll have an interpretive sign for them at the entrance of our prop, of the property. But additionally, we want to be very important to the San Greta Cristo Heritage Area, and and we we will be because of the work that we want to do there. We want to share um, many of the cultural aspects of our community, whether it's through the buildings that we build, or the way we do agriculture, or the classes we teach. And so there there'll be great opportunities for that. And there's even some talk about, and I don't know if this will come out in the plan, but there's you know an opportunity to maybe have people in residence there and maybe in town or there itself and having be there to teach about culture ah. or uh, be you know the other opportunity could be this whole woofing movement where we could have people come in to to be to work the land and help us develop it as volunteers from all over the world can you tell me again what that's called woofing woofing yeah Okay. Don't ask me what it means because right. I don't have that answer. Okay. <laughs> I could look it up on the computer, but it's, it's it right. has to do with, um, and many of my colleagues would know what it is, but it's this whole idea that you get to go, my, like my, my, my own children are thinking about doing that this next year. You, go, you travel, you stop, you spend a month at a farm, and you ah. add a hand. Okay. Maybe you spend six months. And you mm-hmm. add a hand. Excellent. You get fed, and you get a place to sleep, but you you participate in the ag- the organic agricultural movement. So what we're hearing now, ladies and gentlemen, is this process that Julie and the committee and the community are going through is going to come out someplace, but we're not real concerned that it's not day after tomorrow. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. So um, we, we will not have a, 
a plan for this till 2016, uh-huh. um, probably June, hopefully. And in the meantime, you know, there's some things we can do to be sort of agile and try different things, uh-huh. see if they work, if they, you know, and then change them a little bit and see if that works. And um, I just think that what's really fabulous about this is it's going to open up the eyes of many people to different kinds of things. So you might come to the property because you love art Mm -hmm. and then learn about agriculture. And I might come to the property because I love um, open spaces and want to walk on the river. And then I take a little detour and all of a sudden I'm learning about agricultural practices. Mm -hmm. So every time what's exciting about this is that, Oh, you know, the, the more, not too many ideas, but the, the, cross the crossing of all these different ideas the three or four or five that'll be presented at the at the par- at the park allows people to learn they may already you know they have an interest in one thing but they may end up getting to learn about something completely different absolutely well now you did give a short lecture to people about mm-hmm. it. this has to be economically viable so at the planning process someone asked how is this going going to be sustainable and one of our committees this week met and we had people involved in economic development in the community at that meeting and the main thing is is that whatever we do we need to write a short small business plan for each piece Mm -hmm. and it has to be economically sustainable my belief system is that we will be able to have some revenue streams from various things that we can do on the pro on the property we need to do a business plan around those revenue streams and see if they really work I believe we can continue to write grants in perpetuity around educational processes. So if we're teaching things, if we're, you know, we, we could write USDA grants, different things like that. But for the maintenance of the property and the continuation of the Rio Grande Healthy Living Park, I would like to see it, and I think the committee feels very strongly as well, that it pays for itself. It pays its way. And mm-hmm. so we're, we're working on that. And uh, I'm working very closely with the Small Business Development Center. Jeff Asley and I are going to, he's going to help me through many of the bit different pieces of um, this wonderful software called liveme.org. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. It helps you write a business plan and gives you a template and there's, shows you examples of other um, business plans so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Wow. And it does it helps you do the cash flow analysis. And you know, I've owned businesses before where I haven't done a business plan. Uh-huh. I owned an inn here for ten years. And until I worked for La Puente running Milagros, I had never really lived within a budget. And I think what the nonprofit sector has done for me is it's made me a better business person. Excellent. Yeah, it's really true. Um, and so this opportunity here will be that we'll put things through kind of a washing machine and dryer and see what comes to the top okay. and, and helps make this thing happen. We, we talked a little bit about the challenges that you see in going forward with this. Talk to me about that. It's... It's a biggie, right? Well, it's a big project, and um, there's a lot of unknown things, so you have to be patient for the towards the future. You know, it's um, we're we're gathering information. We're trying to be good listeners. We're trying not to just you know. It's hard because I have ideas because I'm an entrepreneur. So, uh, to, but to listen to what people are saying and to incorporate it and to find our niche, and so you know, it's it's big. It's unknown. unknown. It's mm-hmm. scary in some ways. At the same time, it's exciting. And so, you know, those kinds of things I like. I, you know, all, all my life um, that I've been either a business person or in the nonprofit sector, I've done a lot of things that have been sort of startups. And so this, that doesn't, it scares me a little, but not too much. Excellent. It keeps you on your edge, but it also makes you... Um, continue to try to learn and listen and bring in ideas and then and then make sure whatever we decide no matter how much we really want it that it makes sense financially that it's going to be sustainable ladies and gentlemen i need to tell you that at this meeting i attended people were absolutely passionate about where they put their stars yeah on the different things (laughs) i mean and they had lively conversations about it so there's another thing and that is People are developing a sense of ownership and a sense of place right. in this. And this is, this is great. I mean, 
And this is important, and I think that even municipalities could use a process like this. I think that when I look at cities that have done this, where they've, when they're doing their plan and they open the doors to everyone that's willing to come to help in the decision-making process for an organization or for a city or for a town, um, it changes things because people care and then they have more ownership in their town and they don't get they, they don't get mad because they had a chance to be part of that process so um, I, I was telling Ju Judy you about this organization I really think that should be utilized in Colorado as much as possible in small communities. It's the Orton Family Foundation uh, does a community process this is much like the one we've been doing with Trust for Public Land, but for bigger things like whole cities and whole towns. Mm. And it's it's changing communities to be more vibrant, to be more creative, to think outside the box. And I just think that that is what we need to do. And so this little microcosm, this Rio Grande Healthy Living Park, is a great example of how you can do the same thing in a, at, a, in a, at a town level, a community level, a city level. And um, when I go to these conferences with the Carter Creative Industries, I've been, they talk a lot about sense of place. They talk a lot about um, having communities that are, you know, vibrant and, and have a heart and a soul. Mm -hmm. And this park will have a heart and a soul. And I, and I hope it radiates out to the whole San Luis Valley and to the people that too. visit it. You know, let's take this time. You had a lot of people to help you, and you never, ever can say thank you enough. Right. Why don't you, why don't you say that again? Everyone who's put money and time and everything else that we've needed for this park, thank you so much for everything you've done. And, you know, there's been people that helped us with the loan to purchase this. There have been people that give, gave us money to purchase this. There are people that have, didn't have money and rolled up their sleeves and put in hours of their time, hours and hours and hours of their time. We, these people all need to be thanked. This is not done by any individual. This is done by a group, and this is a great group of people that have been working on this. And then there's another thing that you can still help. And get involved. Yes. And give me that phone number again. Okay. Where's the office? So if you want to get involved, if you'd like to be on an action group, if you want to help steer the direction of this park, if you have ideas for us, call Julie Mordecai. I'm just giving you my cell phone, so you can call that, 719-580-0379. Okay. And the office is where? At 412 State Street. We're not here all the time because we are working out in the field. So best thing is to call first and then um, come see us and set up an appointment. And then also you can go to our website at healthylivingpark.org. There's volunteer applications on there. There's also contact information and ways to get our email. You can get on our email list as well. Okay, let's say that again. Where is your website? Uh, www.healthylivingpark.org. Um, and you can like us on Facebook. We have a great Facebook page oh, too. Oh, wonderful. And you're going to have... Meetings coming up in the summer. What's going to happen in the summer? We'll bring back information from this last um, planning process, and um, and I think that's near closer to the fall. And we'll share with everybody, kind of where how the process, the park has even changed some more. And then after that, we'll be going into a more more highly developed architectural plan for this wow. and and landscape plan. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, this is an opportunity for you to see something and participate in something really neat. And remember that this summer I'm talking about food and nutrition in the San Luis Valley. Okay, see you next, next time. It's the second and fourth Fridays. Bye now.